Here is a man who travels all over the country to stay away from his in-laws, Mr. Bob Saget. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're too appreciative. Thank you. No, no, no. Okay, no. God, I'm so excited I put on a new sweater. I'm really happy to be here. I just, I want to see you all in Viking helmet and culottes right now. I'm not kidding. I just, I want to put you all in apartments and pay for it. I'm not kidding. I'm ready to, I want to put guacamole on myself. I'm a dip. I really am. I, I'm lucky to be alive. I almost died. I really did. I had my appendix out. It was four years ago, so I'm feeling better. Thank you for asking. But I did. I was at UCLA Medical Center, and my doctor was Chad Everett. It was a ripoff. I'm not kidding. No, that's a joke. And you caught it, and you're a happy crowd. You really are. Even you at home, you're happy. Just open your robe and say my name right now. I'm not kidding. I'm sorry I said that. Forget I said that. Just let it pass. I do Lamaze comedy. Just breathe deep. It'll be over soon. So I did have my appendix out. It was really weird. The doctor came in. This is terrible. Don't even listen to this. And he said, Bob, it's your appendix. Must hurt like the Dickens. And I said, no, it's right above the Dickens. And he laughed for like three seconds, then it cut me the hell open. And put me on Demerol. Anybody in the audience been on Demerol before? Great. It's a burnout. Aisle five. No, I, <laughs> I was on Demerol for four days, and I don't remember them, but I think they're the best days of my life. <laughs> and they shaved me, right? So I woke up from the Demerol, I looked down, I was a Pillsbury Doughboy. I'm not kidding. It, it was gone. I was popping fresh no more. But I kept it shaved because I got some jobs in some baby commercials, you know? So, so anyway, <laughs> just breathe deep. It's okay. I was in a supermarket. That was a good segue. I'm so proud of myself. What's a segue? What's a metaphor? What's a Grecian urn? Anyway, I'm overdosing on my own attitude right now, ladies and gentlemen. I used to hate obnoxious people, but I like them because now I'm their leader. So, so I was in a supermarket and I saw Paul Newman's picture on salad dressing and popcorn and spaghetti sauce. Does that mean he's missing? Paul Newman is missing? <laughs> Chef, where are you? No, no, you're throwing me off. Thank you. Thank you. I'm humbled. <laughs> Chef Boyardee's been missing for like 20 years. I can't believe it. The guy in the Quaker Oats box, I don't think we're going to see him again, you know? What I mean? He's long gone. You know what upsets me the most? Well, you do know, so I'll tell you anyway. It was killer bees. That upsets me, because they're on television. Regular bees watch that. They're highly impressionable. <laughs> if they go out, do the same damn thing. They become killer bees. You know, it ticks me off. The world is messed up a little. I was in a toy store. There's a new doll out. It's half man, half woman. It's called, gee, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> half a beard. So... I'm thinking about having a kid, but I'm in no position because I'm standing up and I'm alone. But my parents told me this. <laughs> I'm laughing alone. My parents told me. My mom and dad said, if you're going to have a kid, first you've got to learn to love yourself. If you could love yourself as much as your father and I love each other, you're going to grow up to be a conceited, lonely idiot. <laughs> they love each other. It's a really neat thing. They've been married over 40 years. And I said, Dad, you and Mom must fool around a lot. And he said, Bob, after we had you, we decided it just wasn't worth the risk. You know? <laughs> You know what I'd like to do now? I'd like to do a song, a serious song, and hear it, my guitar, handed to me by my slave, Otto. This is a, <laughs> this is a song, and this is a strap, so it's time for fun. This is a song, everybody, oh, you don't have guitars. Here's a song, it's a song when I first met my wife, and I told her, I said, I, I want to make love to you badly, and she said, at least you don't overestimate yourself, and I wrote this, and it's about rejection, and I hope it never happens to any of you, and I'm sure it happened to that guy in the back, but here we go. I met her just a day ago, and I can't believe what she's done to me. She's warm, she's sweet, and she's beautiful. Falsetto, I'm excited right now. I really am. But she's got a boyfriend, a boyfriend, a boyfriend. Three boyfriends. The joke part. And they all lift weights. And they eat raw meat. And I'm a six foot geek. They beat me up real bad. But I wouldn't care if they broke my nose. Or bent my back. Or neutered me for life. I wrote these lyrics. I'm real proud of them. Yeah. As long as I can still be her boyfriend, her beat-up boyfriend, her mutant geek nose boyfriend, her Quasimodo knock knee black-eyed boyfriend. That's Oh, yeah.
happy now? I am so happy, but nothing's like Egypt was. The women are so beautiful there. They all look like, you know, Tony Bennett, Danny Thomas. They're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Any other memories of the trip? Uh, we had an exciting thing happen in the restroom at the Cairo airport. Oh, really? Well, let me tell you this, Bill. You're supposed to, <laughs> you're supposed to tip for everything, which is cool because, you know, they need money in that country, as a lot of people do everywhere. And uh, now I've compensated for why I'm saying this. But it's sad. You go into the uh, men's room at the airport and you have to tip for toilet paper. And I didn't really understand the currency. I gave a guy $17 for three sheets of toilet paper. <laughs> it's a good investment, though. Well, you're better off actually using the currency. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like 35 cents instead of uh, $17. <laughs> well, what, about the, what about the photos? Let's take a look at the slide. Well, let's do it. Let's hit it. All right, Here we go. Time. We're going to look at right now at the monitor. That's uh, my wife and I. My wife's the one I'm holding, not the one to the far right there. <laughs> that's, the, that's the Sphinx. Here we are in front of the Great Pyramid. Let's just go on to the next one, because that's just kind of... Here it is. Now, this is, I believe, a 65 Green Rambler. I don't know uh, how it got there. It took thousands of slaves to build a thing. Nobody knows how it got there. I don't know what that thing is behind it, a mason hat or something. I don't know. It's a Shriner hat or an ice bucket. Who knows? Let's go on to the next one. This is a guy, uh, Jerry and Arnold, my friends that I met uh, in the desert. <laughs> these guys, they take, uh, they take hammers and they crack up these rocks and they make sand. These guys, they'll actually make the desert. It's amazing. They, uh, it's handmade. It's handmade. It's a beautiful thing. And this is called Abu Simbal. This is a beautiful place. I'm actually holding my wife there in front of these statues of, uh, you can see their feet. It was like a, it was a problem. This is a, a beautiful uh, Sphinx. I love Sphinxes. Let's go on to the next one. I love, I, I, every Sphinx. The next, next Sphinx. He has another Sphinx. I love them. I can't get enough of them. I'm not kidding. Here's another one. Another Sphinx. Here's another Sphinx. Oh, this is a Horace, the falcon-headed guy. He's a close personal friend of the Sphinx. And I like him. Okay, I put 75 cents in this thing. It didn't shake. It didn't... No. That's Horace again. We're back to that. I didn't intentionally want them to go backwards, but that's Horace. This is my closing night at the gig there. There was no audience, and uh, that's what I get for not learning the language. <laughs> You're a funny guy. Bob, thank you, Bob. You're the eager. I love that. Absolutely. I'd like to want to thank all of our guests. Pudgy? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Box. Thank you for having me. Abner the Eccentric. Abner, you're going to be in a, a new film, The Jewel of the Nile, sequel to Romancing the Stone. You're going to talk in that film? Oh, that'll be a treat. Wayne Fetterman, good luck on the ski slopes, buddy. Thank you. Have a good time. Our announcer, Mark McEwen. Mark, you going to work up an act here? Yeah, I want to see. Did you take pictures of Leon Sphinx? No, actually, uh, we went to the back of the Sphinx. Uh, we went to the back of the Sphinx. What's it like at the back? It's Sphinx back there. Nobody goes back there. 